There's a new study coming from the University of British Columbia that says or suggests that Tylenol or acetaminophen, the active ingredient in Tylenol, may actually dull the pain of anxiety and existential dread. Now they did this with an experiment where one group was given a thousand milligrams of acetaminophen and another group was given sugar pills. Then they were subjected to either having to write about what is going to happen to their body after they die or write about dental pain, which it's bodily pain, it hurts, but it doesn't hurt your spirit, like thinking about your rotting corpse. And then they had to make a decision. How much should bail be set for a prostitute between zero and nine hundred dollars? So after this, they found that the people who had taken Tylenol didn't really have the weight of the world crushing them from the inside anymore. I think that's pretty interesting. Tim, you look bored or filled with existential dread. Do you need Tylenol? Kim, someday I'm going to die. Yeah. And everyone I know is going to die. We're all going to die, Tim. And the sun's going to explode. Well, that'll be billions of years from now. Yeah, but it'll happen. Yeah. Are you okay? What you can I do for that? You can do nothing about it. But what they found in this study... Thanks, Kim! You, I'm sorry. That's the shoulder I be, needed to cry You can on. be positive, or you can not think about it, or you can... Take some Tylenol. Take some Tylenol, or dread something that's inevitable and make it ruin your life. But Daniel Randes, one of the researchers working on this, says, we think that Tylenol is blocking existential unease in the same way it prevents pain, because a similar neurological process is responsible for both types of distress. Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's brain chemistry. Mm -hmm. it, you know, pain in the body is, you know, impulses in the brain yes. connected to nerves and such. And as is depression and anxiety, it's all chemical balances and imbalances. So that makes sense. I'll believe that. Mm -hmm. The issue I take is with this ridiculous study. Okay. How, does, how did they come up with this? Okay. So, well, yeah, I understand that writing about, you know, being dead and what done with your remains and the dental thing, that makes sense. They're two different kinds of pain. Two different kinds of pain. Right. And that's a good way to get, you know, your subject in the right mindset. Mm -hmm. But then they gauge their existential dread level mm -hmm. by having to set bail for a hypothetical prostitute who was arrested? Well, they're going to charge more. Is that the more, most direct way to gauge that? Well, listen, okay, I'm not saying I necessarily agree with this, but I think that what they were thinking behind this was that people are going to give, make a higher bail amount if they are not filled with dread, or if they aren't, don't have, like, what does it all mean on their minds, just more like, well, this crime needs to be punished, and that's it. So the more depressed you are, the more sympathetic that you are towards this hooker with the heart well, of gold. Well, the more you realize it doesn't really matter, none of it really matters, none blah, blah, really blah. Matters. You know, your depression from earlier in this segment. So that's, I guess that's the way they, they gauged it. I don't know if I necessarily agree with it either, but that is what I think they were thinking behind it. I think people deal with depression in so many different ways. You can't say one way or the other that this group of people is going to be more sympathetic to the plight of a hooker and this one less. That's true, because people could also have their own predetermined opinions sure. about prostitution if they think it should be legal or if they think it's a Maybe this is a guy handily. fresh out of San Jose who <laughs> just visited a hooker himself, and he's super depressed but has all kinds of sympathy for them. You yeah, know? that is a hole in the study. And there was a second study. Yep. Now, this, this is checking the, the, the same hypothesis as before, right? Mm -hmm. So in this one, uh, a group, you know, they take the Tylenol and they take the sugar pill, and then some of them watch a four-minute clip from The Simpsons, and some of them watch uh, a really weird set of short films from David Lynch called Rabbits. Yeah, it's kind of like mocking sitcoms, and there's a really weird soundtrack, and all the characters speaking non sequiturs instead of talking to each other. It's just a bizarre film kind of questioning the point of sitcoms but or this this is television. not this is not comparing you know pain and existentialism and dental pain no pain it's again. more like this is entertainment versus like really weird and creepy it's like entertainment versus something lampooning entertainment making you question what is the point of us laughing along with these doldrums and you know it's uh <laughs> it makes you think a little bit further about what entertainment is what it's, what its purpose is and what the point of it all is. So then what did those people have to write about? They had to look at the 2011 Vancouver hockey riots. Uh, you may remember that, people freaking out over the Canucks loss and tearing the city apart and deciding how much they should have to pay in punitive damages. It was the single most existential experience of yeah, our lifetime. Yeah, that really isn't existential, so we, have may, we may have a point here. Were all these people hockey fans? Were any of them Canucks fans? 
see, you're right. Were on any that. of them public defenders? You know, or, you there's know. a lot of things it up in the air. It seems so obscure and so <laughs> obtuse that there's no way you can glean anything from these tests. I well, don't what so. they learned, at least from this, that we may or may not agree with, is that people who watched *Rabbits*, the weird film, were more punitive on average, saying the writers should be fined more than they normally would, and the people who watched *The Simpsons* thought the opposite. You know what? I think we're trying. I think we've figured out that maybe this study might not have that much credence. I think I may have read this differently, but I, what I got from it is that the pain experienced from existential dread mm -hmm. is is found in the same part of the brain that one would experience from physical pain. So taking a Tylenol should, I mean, like theoretically speaking, it should fix the pain in, in both forms. Their, their clinical applications of this finding is that they may have some idea on how to allay the symptoms of people who suffer from chronic anxiety. So I guess- Great, that's a very noble goal. Let's do goal. that. Let's leave David Lynch out of this, all right? <laughs> Obviously, it's gonna require more research. From a neurological stand standpoint, it may be very useful. 